welcome to this week's piece. Oh my gosh, I'm just kidding. However, my husband brought this home and was like, I need a desk, so I got this. And I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? No. So I scoured the markets and I found this beauty. It is small enough to not take up a ton of space, which we don't have, but it's tall and thin, so it will still hold a lot of things. It is, however, very farmhousey, which is not our sp style and certainly not my husband's style. If I had to say my husband had a style, I would say that it would be none at all. However, he does really, really love um, the old mobster books and movies and he has like every single one and he loves the color black. So I'm thinking about all of that as I'm taking this entire thing apart. As you can see that front little piece there, it was not original. It was added on later. Um, this was actually just spray painted white. So it wasn't done very meticulously. It was just kind of sprayed every which way. There was overspray in a lot of areas where there shouldn't have been. That's fine. It's, I got it for a good price and it didn't, it was structurally very, very sound. So I was glad about that. But it did take me a while to go through and do all of these little tiny repairs. So there was tons and tons of lifting veneer, tons of it. I had to go through, um, get it all glued up, tape back down, and then, of course, there's huge gaps where the veneer was completely missing. And since I know that I'm gonna be doing black on this, it covers a multitude of sins. So we'll do filler and all that. Then I noticed this break in the leg here, which again, isn't a huge deal because this is actually just a trim piece. And I thought that it was just a little too fancy for my husband, since the top half I felt was very almost gothic style the way that the shape goes up there and the bottom was very you know kind of farmhousey so I'm gonna make some adjustments on that once I get it fixed um and then we're just gonna masculine this thing up a bit that's that's my goal as I'm going through this entire thing and figuring out what I'm doing at this point I don't have a complete vision I'm just going through and kind of taking stock of the piece figuring out everything that I need to do to it to get it to essentially a, a base piece to work on. As I said, this front piece isn't structural, but I still wanna get a decent glue up on it because just in case if it's ever tipped forward or anything, I wanna make sure it's fine. So when I do these, I make sure that I have glue on both pieces. I did dry fit them together before because they weren't really hooked all the way together on the piece. So I wanted to make sure that it would be a tight fit. It was, I put glue on both sides and then I will do the top clamp, squeeze it down, but not all the way down yet. I'll get it there just to kind of hold it in place. And then I can grab a smaller clamp to do the side, and then I can really tighten up both clamps, wipe off any glue squeeze out, and then that's how I'll let it set up. Now, I had to do several rounds of these drawer repairs, so that was the first go around, and then as I was filling with wood filler on the missing pieces of veneer, I found more pieces that were lifted, so I had to go back again with more glue in the syringe and <laughs> fill those, and then get those taped and clamped back down, and then I just let everything sit overnight. That's kind of how I do it when I'm going through these stages where there's just a ton of little tiny repairs like this. They're just tedious, so I'll do as much as I can, let it go overnight, and then I can start essentially round two of the same thing. Again, I'm not using anything crazy here. This is just Elmer's wood filler. These drawers are gonna get painted black, so it just needs to be smooth. Here, I just found another repair. They, You can see they have tiny pin nails in there. I do not ever put pin nails up through the glides there. Um, they can tear up the wood underneath, but I will fix that later. I'll show you how I did it. But just so that you know, it's way better to do a glue up than it is to put the pin nails in. Now, as I said, I didn't like how 
kind of feminine this bottom situation was. So I kind of traced out just a simple shape on it. Um, I was trying to leave that glue block so I didn't have to cut up another one, but it's fine. I took it off, finished out the cut, and then I'll go in with my sander and round off the edges and make sure that it's smooth and looks like it was always like this. Now this paint came off really easily just because it was spray paint and there was probably no prep work done beforehand, which always makes my life so much easier. So I did a lot of sanding with this guy and then a lot of hand sanding. And then I remembered that I have my amazing scraper. So I used those two and all of it worked well. It just took a long time because I knew I was going to keep quite a bit of this wood. I didn't actually get to keep as much as I wanted to, but as I was going, I was trying to figure out what pieces I could keep wood and what pieces I couldn't. It was a very interesting piece because there were at least three different species of wood on this. I counted mahogany, poplar, and maple. There may have been a couple others, but they were just very similar in, in looks. But I was like, wow, that is a lot of different kinds of wood. So they don't all stay in the same. Um, Thankfully, the poplar was generally as um, the drawer sides and things to just build it with. And then there was quite a bit of maple exposed and just the one front section on this here um, was mahogany veneer and it took forever to get the white paint out of this grain. So you can see me here with a little exacto knife trying to get all the little white specks out of here because I do want a lot of this part left wood. Now we're jumping back to the drawers. This piece had so much going on with it that I kind of just jumped around a lot. Um, as I was waiting for things to dry and set up, I would just kind of move around and move to different sections of the piece. So you'll kind of see things be done in an interesting order and that's just because I had a lot of repairs to do and a lot of different things to kind of happen to it and I needed to make sure that I was still going and moving as I was waiting for all of those things. So if you were wondering, that is why. And this little trim piece here, I decided that I wanted it to be wood and because I knew I was going to do the frame of the doors black. So I took this off, got it all sanded, and then I can kind of go from there. This is what I did with the entire thing. I would just kind of pull off pieces and figure out what was going to be wood and what wasn't. I wasn't exactly sure just looking at it, so it was all decisions being made while it's unfolding. As I mentioned previously, there was a lot of different kinds of wood with this, so I'm using dark walnut. I feel like it's not too dark of a stain, but it's dark enough to help the different species of wood kind of match up. So this underside, I'm going to keep solid wood on the drop leaves on the front. I like to keep those wood and just have the clear coat because I find that they are better to be used as desks that way. That's just my favorite way to do it. Um, and then the front, I can kind of do something else. And you can see I kind of just set up an assembly line of staining. <laughs> it made things go quite a bit faster. And then I finally remembered, of course, I have this stripping tool uh, sent to me by Emily. I always forget about this thing and it is just incredible. And it made such quick work of this paint on this. So I would literally just scrape the paint off. It took two seconds and then I could go in and hand sand all these front little trim pieces because those front little trim pieces of course, I'm going to stain and then the side panels I'll do black. So it's all getting broken up with these with this like two tone look. I'm opting to do this first and I know it seems a little weird because I'm going to paint. However, I'm going to get all of these done. I decided later on that I wanted to keep these wood. So again, just as I'm going and deciding, <laughs> that's how this has happened. So same thing, I'm going to scrape these, stain them, and then I will also seal them and that way when I go in with the black paint, it doesn't contaminate them. If I get any paint on here, it's already sealed, the trim is sealed, so I can literally just wipe it off with a damp cloth. And I don't have to use tape, because you guys know I don't love using tape. 
it's funny because I actually do use it once in here in this video, but it's fine. We won't tell anybody. And then this is legit the speediest run through of doing an entire piece black because it's boring to watch people paint a solid color. I mean, I think it is. And these little cubby holes are the worst to paint. Usually if they're wood inside, I just leave them because it's not worth it. Unfortunately, they spray painted that one, so. Okay, so here's my tape adventure. I only do it for things like this. So I'm just putting this square in. I think it'll really look really great with a negative space of wood on the front. It will help break it up and kind of look more matchy-matchy with the trim. This is what's in my head at least. So this is a really strong grain, so I like to keep the brush strokes going in that direction. You'll see me lay it on in kind of every which way, but then I'll go back and smooth it out with the grain of the wood. And it just, I feel like it looks better. It's a better end result. I will say that tape does give you this satisfying, just crisp line right there. I couldn't have done this with a paintbrush freehand. However, on this part, I pulled out my roller and just... I had to go so much faster with this. It just, I did a brush on my first coat and I was like, I have a roller, why am I not utilizing it? So I definitely did that on that. And then I just took my angled brush and again, no tape. And I just did the cleanup around the edges. I can do that because as you can see, that section there has already been stained and sealed. So if I happen to get a little paint on it, it's fine. I just wipe it off. Now at this point, I'm just doing a little bit of detail work and making sure that everything's right. I actually did do the dovetails black and then I'm gonna ruin it and go over it, but it's it's fine. So I'm starting to seal everything with just my satin poly. It's just clear. You'll see later on, I add a little bit of black when I'm just doing the solid black portions, but I don't wanna add black in it over the top of where I'm just sealing in wood. I think that will make more sense later. I do do two rounds of poly and I sand in between. I also just carried along with this assembly line situation. It worked out so well. So I have those little pyramids set up on a different table and I would get these done up, lift it, and then carry it over, set them up, and then work on the next piece and then just set it over. So this was really, really fast this way. told you I did those dovetails doesn't matter because I'm gonna cover it up so again my husband loves this I'm he hasn't seen it yet so I'm hoping that he loves it but this is one of his favorite movies um, so I'm putting this on either side of the drawers this is put on like every other one of my decoupage things. However, this is watercolor paper and it is way thicker than what I normally use. I had enough room for it, so I wasn't worried about the space, but I would not use this again. It was just a little too thick for what I wanted. I thought it would, it prints out a really cool kind of old school vibe and that's what I wanted to go for. So I love the look of it. However, it really, really wanted to bubble up on me and I had to just take a few extra steps to make sure that it didn't do that. And that's frustrating. When I decoupage something, I just wanted to go on and do a good job the first time. So this was a little finicky and I would not recommend it. It is watercolor paper. Don't do it unless you like the look of it and you want to spend extra time dealing with it. You just have to make sure it's extra, extra, extra saturated with the poly underneath and over the top again it was a pain but it looks cool so 
there's that. For anyone who doesn't know, this is your first one of my videos. Uh, I decoupage a lot. This is not the best one to watch for learning. However, I put on a thick layer of my satin poly and lay my paper down. Again, I usually don't have to use this much because this paper is too thick. I will lay it down and then I will do a coat over the top. Since this is getting split between the drawers, I'm just doing a rough cut on that split there. It is not precise. I will let this fully dry and then come back and clean up with a sharp blade around the edges of the drawers to make sure that it is a smooth flush surface. And then after that, I will then seal again with the poly to make sure that there will be no lifted edges ever. As I said before, I sand between coats of poly. Um, that's all I'm doing, it's just a very quick light sand and then I will go through, redo this, and then I can start dealing with the rest of the black paint. And you might think this is overkill, um, but I really, really love adding an extra layer of protection of wax over the top of my poly pieces on surfaces where I think they're going to be getting a little extra. So on top of dressers, nightstands, end tables, things like that, I will always seal with poly, but then I will do an additional layer of wax. Um, wax is way more water resistant. I mean, it just, it's incredible. You can totally see the difference. So I love doing that. So here you can see the drawers are not sealed. They don't even have the second coat of black on yet. That's just the first coat. However, that front section is sealed. I was just doing color testing on that. And then the boxes on the inside still only have one coat of black paint. And like I said, I was just bouncing around all over the place trying to make sure that I was always doing something at all times while I was waiting for certain things to dry and you know, just all over the place. I somehow miss showing it in this video, but all of my hinges, everything, were all labeled with a marker or pencil, and that way I knew that what spot they went back in, because with any vintage piece, a lot of times they're set in their ways, and you want to make sure those hinges go back in the exact spot that you took them from. I did give the hardware a spruce up with some gold paint. I initially thought they were going to be brass and they were actually just not very brass. They looked brass and then once I cleaned them up, they were just not. So that's fine. I just did a light coat of spray paint. It is what it is. I try to avoid it when I can. Um, this was just a cool trick that I found when I was doing the screws. I would just wrap the sandpaper around this little bar here and made quick work of the screw heads because of course they were all covered in that white paint. Now I'm putting the trim piece back on. What I did is I drove the nails in about halfway so that I could line them up with the previous holes and then tap them in and then I would just do these little punches into the finishing nails and get those recessed in there so that they weren't sticking out at all and they wouldn't leave any marks on the other side of the door. I used this little punch through on all kinds of stuff on this project so it was very handy. And when I got this piece, it was missing the left side door knob. Well, it turns out they had just put it in the lower drop leaf portion, and that's because the left-hand side was stripped out. So once I figured that out, I just glued up just a little stick of wood. You put it in there with some glue, and then you can screw it in, and it will hold tight as it ever was. Um, way better than using a wood filler or anything like that that will just strip out again. So now those perfectly match and then I just grabbed one of my antique knobs that I had from another project 
and put that on the drop leaf portion. And then this is just some steel wool with the wax on and I'm going over the entire piece and smooths it out again. I just keep waxing everywhere. This was just some overspray of the white spray paint. I had to clean up because I couldn't leave it. And I'm just going around and doing whatever detail work I can find as I go. So here I'm just using this little guy to recess the rest of the nails. They're just amazing things. So now this won't scrape along the bottom and it's still holding. Those are really, really small and I thought I would do more damage trying to take them out than to just nail them all the way back in. And then of course I went through and waxed all the drawers cause you know. So to put the front back on, it was originally glued. However, it wasn't glued. All the glue had been broken up by the time I got the piece. So I redid the glue blocks put it on and then I did the same thing with the nails where I put them through halfway and then I lined them up with the old holes and the nails essentially just hold it on there for the glue to set up. So here's where I'm going in and the little cubbies have finally had their second coat of paint as well as the front of the drawers and now is when I'm using the tinted poly. So this is just whatever sealer you're using. If you just add a smidge of your paint to it, it will give you a better finish overall and will be less cloudy. I realize it looks very cloudy right there, but that's just because it was wet. Here I just use a razor blade to scrape off any of the excess paint. This actually took off a bunch of the white overspray that was on there as well. Um, again, I don't like taping. I feel like this is just easier. Oh, hi. Taryn here with Ellie Upgrades, and we've got our piece finished. So, this one took me longer than I had anticipated, which is fine. Sometimes that happens. Um, it's just funny because it's such a simplistic finish that you wouldn't think that it would have taken extra time, but it did. Um, it still needs to have the wax buffed. You can kind of see a little bit of the wax sheen on some of the black paint that goes away once you buff it out. But I like to do the wax because it gives an like, extra layer of protection and we have a four-year-old, so we always need that. Um, I will try and video my husband seeing this. I don't know if I will actually get any of it, he gets home late and I'm sneaking in the house while he's at work. I don't know, but maybe I'll get some kind of something and I'll just do it in like stories on Instagram. I don't know, I'll try and figure something out. Here's a whole other top. You guys know I will include photos at the end of the whole thing. I think it looks pretty cool. I'm very excited for him to see the drawer sides. I was gonna do a couple other things, but um, I decided to wait and do those on some nightstands later on. I don't know, you guys know how my brain, it just is kind of all over. I'll get an idea and then sometimes I'll run with it. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I'll just, I'm everywhere all of the time. Um, so thank you so much always for just being here and supporting me and just everything that you do. Thank you for the coffees and the wish list and just liking and subscribing and sharing. You guys are just all incredible. Thank you so much. I never would have dreamed that I would be this far along in this journey, but it's all because of you guys. So thank you, thank you so much. And I'll see you next week.